Let's begin our worship with the opening hymn, number 780, O Splendor of God's Glory Bright. May God bless our worship. Please stand as you are able. We continue our service on page two. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for the guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Therefore, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, we are. 
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you graciously forgive us all our sins and abundantly provide all our needs of body and soul. Give us confidence in your mercy and teach us also to be merciful to our neighbor, that we willingly forgive all people and, judging only ourselves, lead blessed lives to your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us give our attention now to the chosen readings from God's Word for this Sunday of the Pentecost season. And all the readings today focus us on God's forgiveness of us and then, in response, our forgiving others. The first reading from Genesis chapter 50, beginning at verse 15, we have a wonderful example of a believer forgiving his brothers, Joseph forgiving his brothers that had done so much harm to him. But Joseph in faith uh, did it uh, gladly and also pointed out that God did amazing things. Despite their wrongs, God did amazing things uh, through them. This reading from Genesis is also the basis for the devotions in the meditation devotional booklet this week, if you uh, will be looking at that later this week. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, Jacob was their, their father, um, they said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and will pay us back in full for all the evil that we did to him. They sent the following message to Joseph. Before he died, your father commanded us, you are to tell Joseph, please forgive the offense of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the offense of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down in front of him and they said, see now, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring this to pass and to keep many people alive as it is this day. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will nourish you and your little ones. He comforted them and spoke to them in a kind way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is number 103. We'll sing the version uh, printed on pages 6 and 7. And as we, we sing that, you'll hear some familiar words. Uh, Praise the Lord, my soul. But also a, a number of descriptions of God's forgiveness. So as we sing it, may we praise God for his forgiveness and how wonderful it is. Psalm 103.
As you're able, please stand for today's gospel reading. And we introduce the gospel reading from Matthew with the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Bear with each other and forgive one another. Forgive us, the Lord, for gave you. Alleluia. Matthew 18, beginning at verse 21, Jesus uses the, the parable of the unmerciful servant to teach about how much he wants us to forgive as we have been forgiven. So when Peter came up and asked Jesus, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother when he sins against me? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you as many as 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle them, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Because the man was not able to pay the debt, his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, children, all that he owned, to repay the debt. Then the servant fell down on his knees in front of him, saying, Master, be patient with me, and I will pay you everything. The master of that servant had pity on him released him, and forgave him the debt. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii. He grabbed him and began choking him, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and begged him, saying, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and threw the man into prison until he could pay back what he owed. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were very distressed. They went and reported to their master everything that had taken place. Then his master called him in and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt when you begged me to. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? His master was angry and handed him over to the jailers until he could pay back everything he owed. This is what my heavenly Father will also do to you unless each one of you forgives his brother from his heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, you, O Christ. Please be seated. We join this thing the next hymn. Again, a hymn about forgiveness, forgive our sins as we forgive. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours, for God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, have you found it hard to forgive uh, those near and dear to you or maybe those not near and dear to you? I don't think I've really found that uh, too hard uh, lately. Um, and so this reading is really, the readings today are not maybe specifically chosen for today because of something that I need to learn or maybe something that you need to learn. But something that we, we all need to know all the time. Because actually, as we think about it, you know, there's many opportunities to forgive and many opportunities to ask for forgiveness. And in fact, that's why we gather weekly for worship and we confess our sins and hear God's word of forgiveness because a week is full of the need for that. So whether that's on, the, on your mind or not, somebody that you know you need to forgive and, and or, or somebody that you know you should repent to and, and hope that they forgive you, it's, uh, it's wonderful today to hear readings about forgiveness and God's encouragement to us to, to forgive. In fact, God wants his people. He wants his church. He wants believers to be quick to forgive. We had the example about uh, Joseph and his brothers. Uh, Joseph was quick to forgive a lot of sins that were committed against him by his brothers. If you remember that account, uh, Joseph's brothers had sold him into slave or they had mistreated him. Uh, they he was the, the, the brother that they all hated. Um, they mistreated him. They, they sold him into slavery. He ended up in Egypt and uh, in prison a couple of times and ended up being the second in command to, to the king, to Pharaoh. And that account that we read was uh, a little bit after then the brothers actually came and had to depend on Joseph to provide food for them during a famine. And then at the end of near the end of Joseph's life, uh, their father had died and they were still wondering, would Joseph forgive them? They still were f full, filled with guilt and the need for forgiveness. And it even kind of sounded like they maybe questioned whether Joseph would forgive them. Do the people around you in your life and my life maybe think about you and me, the in a similar way, wonder if we will forgive them if they have done something to us or about us or, or said something or just had an attitude toward us that was, was wrongful? Do people know that you will be quick to forgive them, that I will be quick to forgive them? Do people around us know that God is quick to forgive fully and freely. Well, sometimes people get the wrong idea about what God is like. And maybe sometimes people get the wrong idea about we, but what we are like, and maybe sometimes they get the wrong idea about we, what we are like as God's people, as believers, as ones that are quick to forgive. Maybe because sometimes we might not be or appear not to be. I did a little, little bit of research and maybe kind of laugh at this, but um, I thought I'd, I'd just look up online, you know, de definition of forgiveness. What are the benefits of forgiveness? Here's what I found. I found something on the, the Mayo Clinic uh, site, and this was a little article. It's actually kind of interesting. And it, it spoke about forgiveness and uh, how forgiveness is good. Um, of course it is. But here's what, what uh, the, the writer said. The letting go of grudges and bitterness can make way for improved health and peace of mind. Forgiveness can lead to healthier relationships, improved mental health, less anxiety, stress, and hostility, fewer symptoms of depression, lower blood pressure, a stronger immune system, improved heart health, and improved self-esteem. Well, those sounds like some pretty good reasons to forgive, to be willing to forgive. Um, not that being forgiving and, and give, forgiving others is going to immediately lead to those physical and health blessings, but, but even medical professionals uh, can see the, the benefits of forgiving others. And we probably aren't surprised at that because we probably recognize and we experience those kind of conditions when we when we've held on to grudges or bitterness or people around us have and we just see these, these matters come up in our, our life and health and well-being. 
So that might be a, a good way to, to send us home, send one another home today with forgive one another. Be quick to forgive because it'll be good for you, for your health, of all types of our, our health, and for your well-being. It'll be good for your relationships. It'll just be good for you to forgive others. And that's that's good. God does bless us as we live his way, as we forgive, as he has forgiven us. Yeah, God will bless us in, in maybe ways that we wouldn't even right away think of, like, like these kind of ways. But you know what? I know that there are even better reasons to forgive. In fact, real reasons to forgive. Because as you think about those things, they're, they're still kind of, self-centered reasons, aren't they? I'm going to forgive my brother because then I'll be healthier. I'll, I'll get rid of that, that stress, anxiety, that'll lower my blood pressure. Um, I'll have improved heart health, improve my self-esteem if I forgive my brother. So I'm going to forgive him because it'll be good for me. Yeah, that's kind of kind of self-focused. And of course, that's not what God really wants for us. And the, the reason why God would want us to forgive, and it's not the reason why God forgives us. And so today, as we hear about forgiveness from all different angles, even the, the Mayo uh, Clinic uh, angle, um, we hear a little bit more from, from God's uh, view of things. The uh, third reading for today is from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 29. And so as we think about wanting to for, being quick to forgive, God wanting us to be quick to forgive, we first of all hear that it's really the opposite of what our natural heart, our sinful heart and, and attitude would, would want to say to people when they've wronged us. We would, by, by default, we would want to, um, as, it, as the apostle says in verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come from your mouths. We would like to let them have it. Say only what is beneficial when there is a need to build up others so that it will be a blessing to those who hear. And so getting us, pointing us to the, the reason for what we say, what, whatever we say, for, the, for their sake, to build them up. And to build them up by pointing them to God. It goes on with verse 30 saying, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of every kind of bitterness, rage, anger, quarreling, and slander, along with every kind of malice. So yes, get rid of all those things. And we might say, yeah, get rid of all those things and your life will be healthier. Your relationships will be healthier. You'll maybe live longer. But God says through the apostle, verse 31, uh, verse 32, instead, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven us. Forgive one another just as God has forgiven us. Pretty wonderfully clear there and wonderfully wonderful for, for you and me to, to hear that. Why God forgives us? Not because God feels better and has less stress to bear uh, in forgiving us, but that is what who God is and what he does. God has forgiven us. Forgive one another just as God and Christ has forgiven us. So that's where we would go to when we feel rage and unwholesome talk and bitterness and grudges uh, building up or, or settling in our hearts and minds. <coughs> and we think about the other person, <laughs> but first we think about how God has treated us, how God has forgiven us. And as we think, really think about that, uh, maybe for, um, thinking about how God has forgiven us for doing the same kind of thing that somebody else has done to us, we may ask, well, why? Why did God forgive me? 
On what basis could God forgive me for what I have done to other people? That little phrase there, two words, in Christ, God has forgiven us. It's all wrapped up in, in Christ, in God's Son, Jesus Christ, that God forgives us. So he doesn't forgive us because we've done a little bit less wrong, caused less hurt than others in our world, not because we've paid him off or, or bought, you know, paid him off at, you know, a, a God, if you forgive me, I'll, I'll do this, or I did this, so God, you forgive me. Balancing out uh, God's forgiveness with, with doing good, it is in Christ God has forgiven us. So always, always go back to that foundational truth of, of the Christian faith, of God's relationship with us and us with him. It is all a matter of being in Christ, within the sphere of Christ perfect life for us, his righteousness for us, his love for us, his life for us, his death for us, and his resurrection to life for us and to show us that everything that God the Father sent God the Son to do, uh, he accomplished and it is sure and certain. You are forgiven. I am forgiven. We are forgiven in Christ. And so when we then think about the, the neighbor, the friend, the brother, the sister, the fellow believer, we think about the harm that they have done to us, and maybe even thoughts might come up, I can never forgive him, I can never forgive her, I, I don't want to. I don't want to because they don't deserve it as you and I didn't deserve it from God, God forgiving us. So maybe that direct us back again to God has forgiven us in Christ. And that changes our hearts and our attitude toward the, the person that we should forgive and makes our hearts ready to be quick to forgive not letting a moment of bitterness or a grudge or harboring something else I get in the way at all. Not hesitating to say, I forgive you. The next uh, chapter of Ephesians, the first couple of verses, repeat it again. Therefore, be imitators of God as his dearly loved children and walk in love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. You might almost say that God wants us to keep, keep thinking back to Christ and what he did for us, repeating it a second time in, in three verses. Christ offering himself for us. And with that, changing us, moving us, making us like God in that way, imitators of God. Like a child imitates their, their parents. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not good in our, in our, in our lives. But how, how wonderful it is when somebody says of, of our children or, or a family member that says, yeah, I can, I can see why they, they're such wonderful children, such a wonderful person, because, because you are. And actually, that's what then people also think about God, is they see his people, you and me, believers everywhere, being loving and forgiving like God is. And then, then they too get the right picture, the right view, the, the beautiful understanding of who God is. That God is quick to forgive, desiring to forgive, wanting to restore people to himself and he to them, wanting to then bless them with everything else that flows from that, good health and good relationships and a good heart and immune system and everything else. Yeah, those are just, I guess that's icing on the cake. 
May God bless you and me uh, with his forgiveness, which he does every day. Just as Christ's sacrifice won our forgiveness, may that every day inspire our forgiveness of others. Not hesitating, but being quick to forgive. And with that, that friend, that neighbor, that brother or sister, receiving themselves, not just better health and, and, and uh, better well-being, but they receive God. They receive Christ. They receive God's full, complete, and free forgiveness. That is, they receive from God, being a child of God, part of his family, and an eternity with him. That certainly is a blessing that we would want everyone to have. That God has given to us, and he wants to give it to others. God bless us as he enables us to be quick to forgive. For his glory, amen. And now, may the God of hope give you all joy and peace as you trust in him. Amen. Let us now together confess our faith. We'll use the Nicene Creed that is on page 9 and continues on to page 10. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now join in the prayer of the church that begins on page 10. Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe in which we live. You control all things through your Son, who sits at your right hand in glory. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. Take away our love of sinning and restore us to each day by your grace. The signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Give us courage to carry the cross to the patience of still joy. Instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Hold us and prove us to be good examples for our youth. Hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. We ask you to especially bless a Sherry Daniels, who underwent a, a surgical procedure this past week. Give her health and strength and recovery. Stephen Yilvesacker, a recovering from surgical procedures and, and anticipating uh, some additional procedures. Bruce Randolph, recovering from hip surgery. 
Adrian Lopez, uh, suffering from COVID. Alice Watts, uh, the mother-in-law of Roxanne Watts, who has been diagnosed with, with cancer and will be undergoing uh, additional treatments. And we also pray for Roxanne, who will be undergoing a, a surgical procedure next week. Keep them all in your care. Uh, bless the medical means employed on their behalf. Through your word, assure them of your love and presence and encourage them in their faith. Bless and keep also their families as they rally to support each other. Pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who miss someone they loved. Move us. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with our congregation and with Christus Lutheran Church in Delavan, Wisconsin, and, and with me as we think about the, the call to serve as pastor here and or there. And Lord, we pray uh, for pastors everywhere and congregations everywhere, those seeking uh, to have a pastor fill their pulpits, uh, pastors considering calls, or just recognizing as a church body the shortage of pastors and the many calls and opportunities to preach and teach your word. Guide and bless us and, and all as we seek to carry out your will and your ministry. And now, hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now let us thank and worship our God with our offerings. We continue our service with the sacrament uh, and responses beginning on page 12. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and at all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love, you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy, you planned our salvation. In grace, you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Close our service with the words of thanksgiving on page 15. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it and through your word, we'll strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close our service with the closing hymn, Oh, How Good It Is. Uh, it's becoming a favorite uh, hymn, and note this time as we sing it, uh, the words about us forgiving others as God has forgiven us. And may that uh, be on our hearts and minds as we go to our work and school and everything else uh, in the week ahead. Oh, how good it is. <laughs> 